so happy we could have this romantic evening together. No problem, babe. Happy anniversary. Well, that's kind of what I wanted to talk to you about. Yeah? I mean, we've been together for, what, three days now? And I know I said I wanted to take it slow, but... I, I think it's time we take this to the next level. Gina. I have been waiting forever <laughs> to hear you say that, like almost three whole days. I know, I know, I know, and that's that's why I think we should do something a little special tonight. That's my favorite. Educational broadcast about a local music store sound education. Hi guys, welcome to Tuned In, where we help you select and maintain your guitar. I'm Mike Dorr from A Sound Education in Brookfield, and I will be your host for this R Beat segment. Today we will go over the anatomy of the guitar. So stay tuned in for what's coming up next on R Beats. All right, guys, let's get started. What we have here is an electric guitar. And we're gonna start up here with what's called your headstock. It's this curved piece of wood here. You can see you have six parts that are attached to your headstock. Those are your guitar tuners. Each tuner is gonna control the tension of each individual string. As the strings move down on to what's your guitar neck here, you see this white piece of plastic that's your guitar nut. That is there to guide the strings evenly through the uh, fretboard so your spacing is even throughout that on the top of the neck. And once you get to the bottom, the bridge will handle the rest of that. The top piece of wood on any guitar is called your fretboard. The reason being is that you have the silver lines that run through the fretboard and those are called, you guessed it, frets. As you move down the guitar neck, it's attached to what's called the body of the guitar. That's attached to the body by what's called a back plate and a neck joint and four screws. Coming back to the top of the guitar, once you have the neck attached to the body, you start dealing with the electronics. Here you can see three what are called pickups. All right, some guitars have two, some guitars have one. This particular electric guitar has three of them. So. You have three pickups here, and you can tell in the pickup you have six, six round spots in the pickup. Those are magnets, they're wrapped by metal, and that's what's actually gonna pick up the vibration of the guitar, run through the controls here, and out of here into your amplifier, hence the electric guitar sound that you're gonna get. As the guitar pickups pick up the vibration of the strings, you're gonna be running through these three knobs here. These three knobs, do different things. This top one here is called the volume knob and it controls the overall volume of the guitar. Setting it to zero will send no signal to the amp, but as you turn it up to 10, it'll send the full signal to the amp and allow everyone to hear the volume at its full volume, the guitar at its full volume. The second knob here is what's called the tone knob. Depending on where, which pickup is working at a time, this knob and this one below it are gonna control the tone. As you roll the tone to zero, it's actually gonna take the high end off the tone of the guitar, um, the high EQ off the uh, tone of the guitar, so it'll actually make it sound darker and muddier sounding. So say if you want it to sound jazzier, you can actually roll this tone knob to zero and it will give you much of, a much more darker, warmer, jazzier, jazzier kind of tone. Next to the knobs, you have what's called a pickup selector. There's five different positions on the pickup selector. In the fifth position, that will give you the neck pickup only. In the fourth position, you're gonna have the neck and the middle pickup at the same time. In the third position, just the middle pickup. In the fourth, the middle and the bridge. And then also in the first position, just your bridge. Now that we're at our bridge pickup, right next to it, you guessed it, is your guitar bridge. Your guitar bridge consists of a plate and also six string saddles. These string saddles are very important because they actually go up, down, and back and forward, and they control the string height and also the string intonation of the instrument. Last but not least, from the body and from all this that's going on, you lead to this part here, 
which is your guitar output jack. So depending on where you have these volume, this volume control, this tone control, and this pickup selector, all that audio is gonna come out of this part right here. It's gonna to go to the amp via an instrument cable. And then once the amplifier is amplified, everyone's gonna hear this sound. And that are the major parts of an electric guitar. Again, everyone, I'm Mike Dorr from Asan Education. Check us out next time on Tuned In. Oh my God, wasn't that amazing? There's nothing like music education just to get you going, am I right? Yep. Um, music. I sure am good. <laughs> Babe, are you tired? Oh, I know just what'll wake you up. The energy of these street performers and this informational piece about their lives. Oh, and the remote is over here. I'm Ethan Scott at US Cellular Field for RBTV. Behind me is Keith Hudson, a performer on the streets of Chicago. I'm here with Keith Hudson at U.S. Cellular Field. Keith, how long have you been a street performer? Wow, I've been street performing, oh boy, about 20 or more years. It started out with B.B. Uh, King's daughter, Shirley King. We kind of ended up doing it one day, and, uh, and the next thing we know, they're starting to charge us for uh, license and everything. And I've been throughout the world, and everybody plays music on the street. Switzerland, and they play with accordions and violins. You know, everybody's New York, you go in the subway, some, it pays a bill or two here and there, you know, here and there. You know, street performing goes way back. It's universal. It's all over the world. And here in Chicago, is the only place that we, we find uh, obstructions where we can't play and make uh, our, you know, daily bread, as you would say. But I, the club scene, like I say, the, was very vibrant so many years ago, over 20 or 30 years ago. Now, L.A., Chicago, New York seem like the live music has just disappeared. Music just isn't the same anymore. When I was 15, I started playing with blues bands. Just give them an orange juice, sit them in the corner over there somewhere, you know. So yeah, I've been doing this since I was about your age. I just turned 60 years old. I have a legacy to leave. This is part of my legacy, to leave a story of music. What happened to the Chicago muse, music scene, Chicago, uh, the world music scene? What's happening with the recording industry? How people are gonna survive in a, a Donald Trump administration? <laughs> Why do you perform on the streets? Well, uh, I can say all the cl uh, live clubs, I used to play pretty regularly. That was every weekend I would go, wouldn't go by without me playing somewhere. Friday, Saturday, uh, Saturday, Sunday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And uh, like I say, the whole music scene dropped out because due to the, the, the violence, the economic uh, hardship that's going on with the country right now. We went from live, live music to wherever we can play. Here in Chicago, they put a license on us. This is the only place I can, we can play because we have a very friendly r arrangement with the, uh, the owner. Been out here for uh, like 20 years or so. Do you have any other jobs or careers outside of street performing? Hustling music since I was a baby, from not recording it or playing it or are doing some aspect of music. Teamed up with uh, uh, Willie Dixon's granddaughter. Like I say, the Rolling Stones wouldn't be the Rolling Stones without uh, Willie Dixon, uh, who wrote a song called The Rolling Stone. She's, she's kicking indoors. She's uh, got a lot of songs and making a lot of influential friends and getting out into the out into the industry. We have a song on an uh, uh, album on the uh, YouTube. It's called Blues Around the World, featuring D'Amico Dixon and various other artists. I'm on it. I'm playing a song called Born in the Blues. I'm playing all the instrumentation, the drums, the guitar, the keyboard. I'm keep on writing some songs. Tamiko, she's an awesome uh, songwriter. She's doing a lot of stuff. So I, I can't even keep up with all she's doing. Uh, we do the Blues Fest. We did the Blues Fest last uh, year or so. Probably be on it this year. You know, I play other genres of music. I do rap. I do everything. Some everything. Fruity Loops, uh, computer and everything. I also arrange and write music. So that also has another turn to it, another feel to it. So I might go off do some classical type stuff, some jazz type stuff or something. It's about keeping current. Uh, Trying to survive in an economic hardship. The whole country's going through, through, through turmoil, and we're about to see that the world's going to need blues. <laughs> so I'm going to play a lot of blues. I mean, this is about the only place we street perform. If we go outside this, this state and we like we're all outlaws or criminals. Thank you very much, Keith. I'm Ethan Scott at the cell in Chicago. Back to you guys. Wasn't that so cool? Yeah, actually, the. That was pretty interesting. Yeah. But Gina. Yes, huh? Is there anything else you want to do tonight? 
Yeah. Well, I was thinking of watching this really cool like segment about the logistics of high school choirs. I mean, something that doesn't just involve us watching something. Well, of course, silly. And that's why it's this one. Well, with this one we can sing along. <laughs> All right. Hi, I'm James Baum. I'm the music director at Riverside Brookfield High School. I conduct all the bands and orchestras as well as the jazz groups. Today you're going to see some combo jazz that features the clarinet. Here at RB, we have three clarinetists in our jazz program. Today you're going to see Becca Perry, who is our senior, and uh, she's been with us for four years and she's playing a great Charles Mingus tune. Our jazz groups are pretty unique in that we open them to any instrument that is interested in learning jazz and that includes the clarinet. We also are fairly unique in that we do a lot of combo music. Thanks, Becca Perry, for that wonderful performance. Now, Miss Dunham with her student vocal section. Hello, I'm Aubrey Dunham, choir teacher at Riverside Brookfield High School. Today, we'll be discussing the different voice types in women's choir. Voices are classified by their perceived qualities or characteristics, including range, tessitura, weight, and color, or timbre. First, there are soprano ones. This is the highest voice type in a women's choir. Let's take a look at their range. Most individuals possess medium voices meaning the majority of female singers are classified as mezzo-sopranos, otherwise in a choir setting known as soprano twos. Let's check it out. <laughs> Last but not least, there's the alto voice, the lowest voice in a women's choir. Here's an example. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. Altogether, we get a beautiful combination of women's voices. Here's our final example. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, ti, That's all for Student Music Vocals Part 1 today. Hope you learned something. Now back to you. Okay, that was incredible. I know, I know. Best anniversary ever. You got that right. You know what we should do next? Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Watch, Watch a documentary about the day-to-day -day life and performances of the Riverside Brookfield, Brookfield High School Marching Band. Band. Yeah! <laughs> My name is James Baum. I'm the marching band director here, and I've been here for 10 years. This is my third or fourth year as the head marching band director. Sophia.
I realized I was giving instructions and interrupting your conversations. But it's okay. It was rude of me, I guess. But are we here to practice or are we here to talk? If you're here to talk, I would appreciate you being now. Um, my name is Esmeralda Macias. I am a senior, and this is my fourth year in marching band. I do not think that we're prepared for the show tomorrow. I am very nervous for tomorrow's first game. I think the biggest setback in our preparation has been the practice for today, how it was scheduled to be on the football field, but instead, by a slight um, mistake from our administration, they didn't realize that there was a soccer game going on until 10 a.m. this morning. Currently, we're waiting for the soccer team to get off our practice fields that they took from us. But until then, we're going to keep that Bulldog spirit and cheer on our Kevin, can you explain what's going on right now? We're practicing the pregame. The pregame, okay. It's, it's a song we play before we get on the field. Uh, the result of tomorrow, probably people are going to mess up a little bit. That's fine, it's the first show. But um, I think it'll turn out okay. Drum major from last year, Tommy. I blame Tommy. Uh, yeah, I feel prepared. Uh, we've been working a lot for this. Uh, we've got a couple of summer camps. Uh, came together as one band is awesome. You know?
band did real well. Um, it was our first time doing the whole show, uh, so uh, it looks as good as it looked coming out of camp. Uh, so we got it back to that after about, it was like three weeks off of not marching it. So uh, it took a little bit of effort to get it polished again to where it was, and now it's only gonna keep getting better from here. God, Todd, check out this band being featured on our beat. Oh my god, I just, I, I can't believe it, just, just, wow. I know, it's, it's, it's pretty cool. C cool? It, it, it transcends cool, I mean, the marching, the bands, incredible. Yeah, really cool, babe, um, well, I thought since it's still our anniversary, we could, you know, snuggle up a little bit before the next segment, you know, like hold my hand. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Nice try, babe. But how am I supposed to concentrate on us when there are instruments to be played and songs to be sung and bands to be marched and performers to be streeted? Street? I gotta go. And he didn't even kiss me goodnight. Oh, no. 